The economy recovers from the pandemic. Energy costs are rising across the country, as we all know. Many are wondering what the government can do, both in the short term and the long term. Well, our reporter, Doogie Beatty, uh, has got more on all this. I mean, it, th there's a, a, a lot of concern, Doogie, isn't there, about really what we're going to face coming up? We are, there is indeed, and I'm here in Porta Ferry in County Down, Northern Ireland, and that'll become apparent why I'm here very shortly. But, you know, as we left out of the pandemic, it actually shows a, a good part of our economy that we need more energy. The problem with that, of course, is where we get it from. Now, I spoke to the energy correspondent, Jamie DeLarge, who told me what is going on inside the world markets, but also how we may be able to shelter ourselves from those costs in the UK. The most worrying development, I suppose, is in terms of gas. Um, the cost of oil, of course, has gone up, but gas has risen by an incredible amount. And we are, to some extent, uh, in the UK, lucky that uh, we have our own sources of gas. Um, we get, also get gas from Norway and we get gas from other sources. But Europe as a whole... Uh, depends to a great extent on Russia. Now, Russia is fulfilling its contractual obligations in terms of supplying Europe with gas, but it apparently is not providing necessarily more than that. And with uh, the growing economy, the price of gas has gone sky high. Now, what would relieve that um, might be uh, acceding to um, the wishes of Russia, which would be for long-term contracts. And I think that probably Europe will have to consider uh, establishing these long-term contracts with Russia for the supply of gas, uh, which would fix the price, uh, maybe at a rising level, but necessarily would fix the price and perhaps stop uh, the cost of natural gas going into the stratosphere. Hello. Well, um, Jimmy there talks about the rising prices of gas, but of course, electricity can be and power can be made by very uh, another lot of uh, ways. And behind me here is about half a mile stretch to Strangford or Strong Fjord, and this is where the Irish Sea empties in to this half mile stretch before it ends up in Strangford Lock at the other side. Now, the tidal run here is huge. It's very, very strong, and there is turbines here. Experimental ones at the moment, but they're roughly creating power for about 1,500 homes. And now with hydrogen, we now know how to harness that power. And I spoke to Jamie again, and he told me how we may take an uptake on this. Luckily, in these islands, um, Ireland and uh, Great Britain, we are blessed with an abundance of wind. And personally, what I would do, and it's not my idea, but uh, I would uh, construct wind farms, uh, more wind farms onshore, but very many wind farms offshore, because wind farms offshore uh, can benefit from a higher, what's called a higher capacity factor, which means on a like-for-like -like basis, they will deliver more electricity than an onshore wind farm. And then use that, uh, the extra supplies, to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. Store the hydrogen as a supply to use, uh, because we really uh, should regard natural gas as a transition fuel. There is uh, a huge uh, resource out there and trapping uh, the power of the tides. Uh, the advantage of that is, of course, is that the tides are entirely, unlike the wind, are entirely predictable. That technology, I think, or investment development of that technology should really be accelerated to a great extent. And, and we could then be even more protected uh, when we have those periods, per, perhaps when, when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine. We, 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 it's there. The technology, the ideas are there. Um, more work has to be done on, on, on tidal power, but we really are not in a situation where we have no options. We've lots of options. We just need the political will to drive them through. The political will, that's, we hear an awful lot of that in Great Britain and especially in Northern Ireland. I'll just give you a little bit of how 
are powerful the tides are here. Every year there's a, a, a boat race here where the men row from uh, Strangford right the way up to Killy Lay at the top of the lock. And I tried to film them a couple of years ago. And the locals actually started from this side. And as they came out of uh, the start, we were in a speedboat and had a job trying to catch them. There's also a lot of Brent geese come into this area. It is a real mecca for wildlife. And last year I was actually filming orca whales that had come into Strangford Lock through this gap behind me here. And, I mean, it is an absolutely beautiful place, and the turbines here don't seem to be doing any real problems to the wildlife.